What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So, so in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome extension that's going to really speed up how quickly you can create glass and windows inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Um, stick around to the end, by the way, because I'm gonna show you how I'm using this inside of some more complex, like actual applications for creating doors and windows and how this can save you a ton of time. But um, we've talked in the past. So first off, say that we wanted to create some commercial stuff windows right so manually speaking what we could do is we could just take this shape right here we could offset the edges in by whatever the thickness of the mullion is and then we can do some push pulling in order to create the glass right you're probably gonna have to do a little bit of work to get this to kind of align in the middle maybe delete out some additional material maybe not but you can do this manually but where that starts getting nasty is if you have to do this across multiple different window frames like this one, it's going to take a ton of work because you're going to have to offset all of these different faces in, or you're going to have to create them as components and do a whole bunch of duplication. Um, it's just going to be a fair amount of work, right? So we don't want to do this manually. And so what I've talked about in the past is I've talked about using a free extension called Lattice Maker in order to do this. And I absolutely love Lattice Maker. It's a TIG extension. I'll link to a video about it in the notes down below. Um, so you can definitely check that out. So what Lattice Maker does is it takes all of those edges, it lets you set a width and a depth, and then also a material. So whatever that material might be, and you can use that to offset all of those at once, right? So it's massively powerful for doing things like creating windows like this. And so the problem with this is that it's inaccurate. So it's inaccurate in the sense that these interior mullions are twice as wide as the exterior mullions, which is not usually what you want to do, right? So if I measure this, this is four inches wide, while this one is two inches wide. And so it doesn't look very good if you use it on long uninterrupted stretches or anything like that, because this isn't how you build these windows. And so what I wanna check out today is an extension from S4U that allows you to basically take a surface like this one, and instead of doing a uniform offset, it has the ability to set a border different from your interiors. And so notice that the settings in S4U frame differentiate between the border and the interior. That means I can set the interior frame width also to two inches like this, and we're gonna set the frame height to the same. We're gonna click on OK. Well, notice what that does is that actually recognizes the interior borders right here like this, and it'll create it in an accurate way. And so what that means is that means that if you look at this right here, this is too wide. This is the way that you actually want this to be on this window. We'll get more into it in a second. So you can find S4U frame on S4U's website. You can also link to these through, uh, I think it's both in the extension warehouse and um, the Sketchication extension warehouse. But if you scroll down, there's an option in here for S4U frame down below right here. And so you can pick that. And so you can get S4U frame for $9 a year, which is like less than a dollar a month. Um, and it can really automate this process really quickly. Now, one thing you might consider, because there are some other good extensions in here as well, is you can get the entire S4U pack in here. There's some interesting things in here for like finding gaps and he's got a good mirror tool and some other things. Um, S4U divides a pretty good, there, there's a few different tools in here. So if you want get the whole thing it's $39 a year but if you just want the one it's $9 a year and so um, basically what this tool does is it gives you the full frame extension so when you install it what it's going to do and let's take a look at it over here what it's going to do is it's going to give you the option to set different things in here. So let's take a look at some of these options. One of the things I really like is it stores your recents in here. So if you've recently created something, it's actually gonna store it so you can pick it from the dropdown, which can be extremely valuable from a time standpoint. But let's take a look at some of the things you can do with this. So let's say for this one, we want a wide border and we also want the border to be thicker. So I'm, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit, but we're gonna say we've got a six inch deep border. So the height is going to be the depth of things. And then on the interior, we're gonna say that we've got a half inch frame that's only going to be one inch deep right here. We're gonna click on okay. 
And notice what that does is that creates a border that's way deeper than the interior frame right here like this. So um, this gives you a lot of really interesting options. So there's also options in here, like for example, if we add an offset, so if I had a six inch offset in here, notice what that's gonna do is it's gonna offset it from that face. Now you don't necessarily want to do that all the time, but you definitely can um, using that offset function right here. And so another thing you should know is the ability to work with faces as well as union the frames. And so the first thing is if you want this to have a glass material associated with it when you do this, and I'm going to set this to maybe something less extreme. So we're going to say this has a depth of one inch. It's got the frame on the inside. It's got no offset right here. Now, if I run this, notice what that's going to do is that's going to create a surface in here and first of all it didn't delete out the faces because the option for delete face wasn't selected so if you select the option for delete face it's going to delete the original face that was in there but if i click on ok notice how it creates this all as one assembly which is great the only problem with creating this all as one assembly is um, it doesn't actually apply a material to the glass pane on the inside so you have to do that yourself um, so usually what i recommend with something like this is i recommend that for your faces you just pre-color them so anytime you're going to take this and create glazing I would just color it before you do this just so you don't have to go back and re-add materials later but now if I run this and click on OK like this notice how it maintained that material on the inside and so the materials I've never really figured out actually. Um, so I've never really figured out the difference between these because they don't really seem to do anything. I mean, I guess if I set the material to face and click on OK, like it still doesn't really do anything. So I'm handling this mostly with um, just applying a material here. And then the other thing we might do is if we needed to apply anything else, we could just select this whole thing and just manually apply a material to it like this. Um, but we do have other options in here, like for example, the union frames. So what the union frames is doing is when you create this border in here, it's taking all of these frames and it's unioning them together. So if you uncheck this, click on OK, notice how each one of those gets created as a separate item in here, which actually is kind of interesting. Um, if you do want some different parts and pieces of your glass, you can uncheck the box for union frames. I almost always do the union frames because it gives me kind of this like smooth um, interface between the different pieces in here. So I pretty much always check this box. Okay, so if you uncheck the add face when you run this, right here. So if you uncheck that box and click on OK, notice what that's going to do is that's going to create the frame group, but it's not going to put the face in here. Now, for whatever reason, the delete face doesn't work. So it leaves your initial face in there, um, which is fine. Um, it's just kind of an interesting just kind of an interesting thing that's going on in here. Now, one thing that's cool about this is you can use this to select objects like this that's going to create a frame without creating any faces. Now, the one thing about that is notice how when you do that, because it's just edges, there's no face for it to pick up a border. So it's just doing everything with the frame width right here. But this does open up some interesting applications for things like framing, right? So if I draw lines for a bunch of frames like this, so say I wanted to create like a wood framing piece and then verticals. If I was to select this, and in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our frame and we're gonna set it to be a two by six, right? So we'll set it to be an inch and a half by five and a half inches right here. And I'm gonna uncheck the box for union frames, click on okay. What that's gonna do is it's gonna do a pretty decent uh, simulation of a framed wall. Now, one thing you're gonna run into with this is these objects aren't exactly centered in here and they're not placed on top of this object. So it's definitely not perfect, but it is kind of an interesting idea for using this to create framing inside of your models. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can definitely play around with it. And so one of the things I like about this is this is going to work with more complex faces as well. So for example, say that I wanted to, and we're going to do union frames, we're going to add the face, but say that I wanted to create curtain wall that kind of follows along with this, we could click on OK. It's going to do that. Now notice how the depth on these frames was not set properly. So let's undo that real quick. Um, let's go back to this option right here. We're going to click on OK. It's going to generate those frames. Now one thing to be aware of though is because each one of these is a separate face 
along the side here, um, it's going to see each one of these as a border object. And so even if you soften and smooth edges in here, so I'm gonna take this and soften and smooth it so this shows up as one face. If you run this, this is still seeing these as two faces, so you're gonna get the border on the inside no matter what. So that is something to be aware of, is on something that kind of like curves or undulates, you're not gonna get this same um, narrower piece in here. That's really gonna work better on flat surfaces. But this does work really well for more complex surfaces like this one. So say that you wanted a wider border on this one and a narrower border on the inside. So we're gonna run this right here, click on OK. Notice how it does a really good job of separating out the interior from the exterior, just like this. And so, I mean, for creating those more complex objects, this is actually super powerful. Right, as long as these are coplanar, it does a really good job of figuring out what's a border edge and what isn't. Um, but as soon as they stop being coplanar, so if I run this over here, notice how it picks these up as individual surfaces, so you're not getting that same um, that same frame on the inside. Now, one thing that I think a lot of people don't know about this tool is it actually has the ability. And let's go ahead and let's separate these out like this. So this actually has the ability where you can draw a frame component. So this is just a rectangle that I created and you can select a surface. Notice how when you do this and you click on this option, it pops up a different window and it gives you the ability to set these different things. But if I click on OK, it's going to actually use this piece right here rather than you having to type in a value as your border object. So same thing's gonna happen over here where if I select this, and I run this. And so for whatever reason, sometimes um, when you do this and you select the component and the face, you need to go ahead and run this once and then you can just undo it and then it'll work again. I don't know why it needs to like reset in here unless I'm just doing something wrong. But notice how again, I'm able to use this component right here as the border object for my piece of glass. And so practically where this is super powerful is for applications like this wall right here, because what I can do is I can select multiple different surfaces, right? I'm just doing a shift double click, or I think it might be a triple click in here, but I can select these surfaces and run it on all of them at once like this in order to really quickly add this material around the outside. And so even here, if I don't like it, I can just do an undo and I can just pick those all up again, right? I'm just gonna pick them all up. Right here, I'm gonna run this. And in this case, I want my border to be maybe one inch and my frame to be narrower. So we're gonna click on okay right here. So notice how my exterior frame is a half inch thicker than my interior frame. And I was able to create that really quickly. So ideally, I probably would have put the glass material in here first, because now I'm going to have to go back and redo that, which is not the end of the world. But just try to remember to apply the material to your faces before you do this. Otherwise, you're just going to have to double click into these groups and just reapply it, which is not a ton of additional work, by the way. But um, it's something that you can save yourself if you remember to apply that glass material first. But then another situation where this would get really valuable is what I want to do here is I want to create a pair of doors. And so to create the pair of doors, what I've done is I've already split these up into surfaces, but I'm just going to pick the door on the left. And so I'm going to pick the door on the left and I'm going to give it a six inch border. And then I'll leave these narrow. And again, let's apply these materials, but I can click in here and I can use it to create this first door. Then I can click in here and use it to create the second door like this really quickly so that I'm not having to come back in here and create these manually. So if you're careful with the way that you set up your geometry in here, then it can be really fast to create things like these complex doors. And so in this situation, maybe I want my border to be more like three inches or something like that. We're gonna click on okay, and I can use it to really quickly create these complex doors inside of this wall assembly. So I do think there's a place for Lattice Maker as well, partially because it's free and it's really easy to use, but this is kind of like the next step up. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about S4U Frame? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.